Hello everyone. This is Sova TV. This is what Elon Musk said about hydrogen in 2015. I don't want to turn this into a debate on hydrogen fuel cells because I, I just think that they're extremely silly. Um, um, so the, and the people have published, there's multiple sort of uh, rebuttals of it, of it online. Um, I mean, the, it, it's just very difficult to, to make hydrogen and store it and use it in a car. Um, it, it, uh, hydrogen is an energy storage mechanism. It's not a source of energy. Um, so you have to get that hydrogen from somewhere. If you get that hydrogen from, from water, so you're splitting uh, H2O, uh, the, the electrolysis is extremely inefficient as an energy process. What's the current situation after five years? Can Ellen Musk be right? At first glance, a lot of things are right. Because in order for hydrogen to become popular, there is still a lot of work to be done. But time goes by and while we don't recognize it, a lot of hydrogen-related technologies are becoming more popular. Let's look at the history of hydrogen, which is not just the hydrogen used in cars, but the hydrogen that will be an important source of energy for us. First, let's take a brief look at the history of hydrogen. The chairman of Toyota Takeshi Yuki Yamada since 2013 said that he has no intention of giving up the hydrogen fuel cell business. And Hyundai Motors may have a clear reason to focus on developing hydrogen fuel cells. Toyota and Hyundai are leaders in hydrogen cars. Hyundai Motors ship trucks to Europe faster than Nikola, who has lost the company's credibility. And these trucks are well run on European roads with driver's recognition. Toyota has the largest share of the global auto market, while Hyundai Motor is the leading maker of cars with the sixth largest share. If Toyota and Hyundai aren't idiots, why do they put a lot of money into developing hydrogen fuel cells, contrary to Elon Musk's skepticism? Using a battery, an electrical energy source has some fatal disadvantages. It is the low energy density of batteries. If you use batteries that are low in energy density to make trucks that carry heavy objects, the battery will take up most of the weight and space of the vehicle, resulting in less room for shipment. The problem with low battery density is that there is a limit to increasing mileage not only in trucks but also in regular cars. And the biggest problem is that charging takes too much time. Many researchers say hydrogen cells can solve this problem. Hydrogen has three times more energy per weight than gasoline and 100 times more energy than batteries, Hydrogen is not like a battery, it's the same as gasoline, so you can finish charging in five minutes. Many scientists hope that hydrogen can solve the problem of a battery that takes a long time to charge. Let's look at when the history of hydrogen electricity began. In 1839, a scientist named William Grove published a paper in Philosophical Magazine and Journal of Science that first succeeded in generating electricity using hydrogen and oxygen. In the paper, Grove made cathode and anode by covering a glass tube containing hydrogen and oxygen in addition to platinum electrodes, and electrolytes used dilute sulfuric acid in water. In 1842, the paper named on a gaseous voltaic battery and explained the detailed theory with the picture. This was the first hydrogen energy concept. Unfortunately, it didn't get noticed. Since then, many car makers have been interested in hydrogen cars. In 1966, GM made a hydrogen-powered vehicle called Electrovan, with a maximum speed of 110 km per hour and a maximum mileage of 240 km. However, it was not sold due to too high price and safety issues. BMW introduced a limited-edition model called Hydrogen 7 from 2005 to 2007. However, unlike the current concept of hydrogen fuel cells, hydrogen was supplied directly to the engine and energy was obtained through the explosion. It was to drive the car in the same way as an engine with regular gasoline and diesel. However, this method was too inefficient and too low in fuel economy, so sales could not continue and production was discontinued. Let's look at the principles of hydrogen fuel cells currently used. If you look at the structure of a hydrogen cell, it consists of an odin cathode and an electrolyte membrane. Electrodes are made using platinum catalysts. Electrolyte membranes are made using polymers. In the cathode, the injected hydrogen molecules react with platinum catalysts and divide them into hydrogen ions, in which the exiting electrons travel in a wire to the anode. The hydrogen ions that are generated move through the electrolyte membrane to the anode. In the anode, hydrogen ions and electrons from the oxygen and cathode in the air usually meet, resulting in water from platinum catalysts. 
This is the principle that electricity will continue to occur while hydrogen and oxygen continue to be supplied as these reactions occur simultaneously. A hydrogen car is a vehicle that drives using electricity generated like this. What's the most important is that the only byproduct of the hydrogen vehicle's movement is water. Due to this, hydrogen power cars are considered eco-friendly. This principle is the same as the fuel cell method that GM used in 1966. If you look at hydrogen cars developed and sold by Hyundai, they use hydrogen high-pressure tanks like vehicles with regular LPG tanks. It is 700 bar pressure to store as much hydrogen as possible in the tank. This pressure is to store hydrogen at 690 times the atmospheric pressure we live in. The storage tank had to be built to withstand such high pressure, so it was made of very special materials. We also need to use a very special and proven material to prepare for a possible hydrogen explosion. Carbon fiber is used as a material to withstand tank explosion and a hydrogen pressure. The hydrogen storage tank using carbon fiber is a material that tears without exploding if the tank cannot withstand pressure for a reason we do not know. If the tank is impacted by an external impact, the tank is torn apart, releasing hydrogen from the inside and reducing the pressure in the tank so that no explosion occurs. So what happens to hydrogen in the air? Hydrogen is 14 times lighter than air. The hydrogen leaked from the tank flies into the air very quickly, reducing the risk of a second explosion. The supply price of this hydrogen tank is still high, so it is an important disadvantage in determining the selling price of hydrogen cars. There is another thing that has an absolute effect on the selling price of hydrogen vehicles. It is the expensive platinum used in electrodes. There is a problem that platinum replacement materials should be developed. Research on this is also being actively carried out. We'll deal with the catalyst in another video. The first thing to check for the development of all industries is whether they are efficient. Let's look at the phone's article. Brad Templeton pointed out that the efficiency of lithium-ion batteries is 85% or more, but the efficiency of hydrogen cars is less than 40%. High efficiency is of course a good thing. So how efficient are the gasoline vehicles we currently use? The efficiency of the vehicles sold for a good fuel economy is less than 40%. Is the hydrogen fuel cell efficiency really low as Ellen Musk pointed out? Vehicles from internal combustion engines that use gasoline or diesel have spent a lot of research and development to improve fuel efficiency. Wouldn't hydrogen cars be more efficient if the development was carried out continuously to improve their efficiency? Because the development of hydrogen cars is just beginning. Hydrogen is the most common element on Earth. If new technology advances that can lower the production costs of hydrogen, we believe that hydrogen will be a more economical alternative to fossil fuels that are being depleted or lithium-ion batteries that are extracted from rare earth metals. If we look at the small cars that we drive in our daily lives, it's efficient to use lithium-ion batteries in terms of economy. But don't you need to think about which energy source would be more efficient for big trucks, ships, trains, airplanes, and so on. It's a forklift that's being used based on hydrogen energy. Already, more than 23,000 hydrogen cell forklifts are used by large retailers such as Amazon and Walmart. Despite many doubts about hydrogen cars, many companies are making efforts to develop hydrogen fuel cells. Hyundai Motors, Toyota, and Honda have also developed hydrogen cars and GM has set up a joint venture with Honda to prepare for a plant in Detroit in the U.S. to produce fuel cells. At the same time, Shell, an oil company, decided to build a hydrogen charging station in California with Honda and Toyota. In addition, Aramco of Saudi Arabia also started building hydrogen charging stations. Elon Musk is obviously an innovator and a powerful man. But should we always say that he's right? Many companies are already continuing their hydrogen research, selling hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, and investing in state and multinational companies to change energy sources to support them. Are electric and hydrogen fuel cells competing? Is there any way these two industries can work together to achieve joint growth? What's important is that even when we don't recognize it, the two industries are developing rapidly. We looked at the major industries that would have a lot of impact on our lives, even if we weren't directly involved. Remember, hydrogen-based energy sources are approaching you much faster than you'd think. Next, let's look at the technology of hydrogen cars.
If you're curious about the next video, don't forget to click subscribe, like, and alarm button. See you in the next video.